Just to pivot a little bit away from, I guess, the fixed income, well, the equity space into what you do. I mean, these are related, of course. We've seen a pickup in, what, sovereign yields since the summer, a gradual pickup. Do you think, is that simply just repositioning after an extreme August, or, you know, are bond markets starting to finally see some sort of growth ahead? Well, that's a good question. I mean, there was obviously a large move, David, within uh, uh, within Treasury, within the bond movements, uh, and this is some kind of semi-correction. But at the same time, a lot of people are looking at, are we really into a U.S. recession for next year? Is this the base case for us? It's only 25 percent probability. So in that scenario where there's 75 percent of a, uh, you know, a potential Goldilocks scenario where it's gentle growth, then yields may drift higher. We may see the 10-year, you know, move up. Uh, our forecast for the next six months is 10-year moving to 1.9 and over the next 12 months to moving to 2.3. So generally yields are probably going to drift up higher if we don't expect the U.S. recession to come through. But that's really dependent on the numbers. Right. And that takes me, I guess, to the next question is what happens to the yield curve? Because it uninverted recently. I mean, is this the start of a re-steepening? Because we all know what happened the last time. Bonds, equities all sold off when things started to re-steepen. I think if we're not into the scenario of, of a, a recession, then steepening is definitely on the cards. Uh, for us, the numbers are still a little bit tricky in the sense that you have ISM numbers out of the U.S. that came in you know, slightly weaker than, put, than expected. And today is really telling, uh, David, the, the PMI that's going to come out is going to give us an indication. I mean, I know surveys mm. suggest uh, an improvement up to uh, above 51. So if that is the case, then um, you know, I think markets are going to look at, you know, recession not being the base case, and then potentially a bit of steepening in the curve. Uh, Gareth, the big question, of course, has been whether and to what extent the slowdown in trade, whether that's exports or imports, starts to bleed into other sectors beyond manufacturing. We heard from the central bank governor uh, in Singapore, the head of the monetary authority there, who said that he thinks maybe things are going to start to turn around because he's not seeing that infection into other sectors. Is the data squaring with that view for you? I think it's mixed. Singapore, uh, some of the data does seem like that. Um, I think as the, as the report showed, people are still uncertain. And whilst there is uncertainty for corporates, they're unlikely to do big trade tickets. Um, and that's going to filter into different sectors. Uh, I mean, tr U.S. trade is obviously a big one. And that's between the two big engines, U.S. and, and Asia. Uh, you've also got Europe, which is slowing down, which is another big engine, another large amount of uncertainty with Brexit. So if you're just looking at the growth engines around the world at the moment, um, there is still enough uncertainty that people are going to be sitting on the sidelines, which means the numbers are not going to be that great. So we don't expect a big turnaround or a fast turnaround at least.